Hi, welcome to this session about the new UKRI open access policy that comes into effect from the 1st of April this year. My name is Matt and I'm a member of the research information management team. I'll be using the UKRI slides for this discussion in order to minimize divergence from their key messages. There's a lot of detail on the slides, so I'll summarize the key points in my overview. Most of you will know that open access is the principle that a research output should be made available free of charge with no barriers to access. Open research is one of the five themes of the University of Glasgow's Institutional Strategic Priorities for Research Culture. And there's some good guidance in the university's policy document, notably the code of good practice in research around making your outputs open. The University of Glasgow's approach is that outputs should be made open access where it's possible to do so. UKRI are keen to ensure that work they've funded is freely available and they've introduced a new policy for research articles that acknowledge their funding. There's also a new policy for books and book chapters from 2024. There are lots of benefits to making your work open access. These include access for those without subscriptions, improving the visibility and reach of your work, and for staff on some grades, evidence of open research is used as criteria for promotion. So what's the scope of the new policy? The new UKRI open access policy for articles and conference proceedings applies to those that acknowledge UKRI funding and are submitted to a publication with an ISSN from the 1st of April, 2022. The current policy will apply to articles submitted until the 31st of March, 2022. There are no open access requirements for books that are published before the 1st of January, 2024. The new policy applies mainly to funding for specific research grants and studentships, rather than to facilities or awards held by UKRI on behalf of other funders. And the pre-existing Research Excellence Framework or REF open access requirements, as defined in the 2021 REF exercise, will continue, and apply, continue to apply to articles and conference proceedings that may be submitted to a future REF exercise. Uh, we expect some further guidance to be issued before any future exercise. So how do you make your peer-reviewed research articles open access under the new policy? There are two main routes to making articles open access. The first is that the published version, often known as the version of record, is made freely available on the publisher's website. There's often a charge associated with this route. It's sometimes known as the gold route, and UKRI are calling it route one. UKRI provide the university with a block grant to cover open access charges where appropriate and where articles fit the criteria. UKRI won't pay open access fees for traditional subscription journals, except if they're on a list of approved journals. We're awaiting a, a journal checker tool from UKRI, which will allow the compliance of a journal to be checked before submission. But if you're planning on submitting an article that's gonna go in after the 1st of April, email us and we can help advise you on whether it will be compliant. Mandatory page charges and supplements will no longer be an allowable cost against the UKRI open access budget. The other main route is sharing the final accepted version of the manuscript before any publisher markup is added via a repository. Uh, this might be a subject repository or an institutional repository such as Enlighten here at Glasgow. This is sometimes known as the green route and UKRI are calling this route two. For papers with UKRI funding, this, recruit, this route requires immediate open access with a CC BY license. Embargo periods will no longer be acceptable. Papers will need to, to use an open access license. A CC BY license is required. This is a liberal license to copy, redistribute, and build upon material, even commercially. There are some exceptions to these requirements. An open government license will apply if an article is subject to Crown copyright or a more restrictive Creative Commons open access license, such as one that, that prevents derivative use, uh, may be granted by exception provided by UKRI. UKRI accept that some materials such as images and maps included in articles may be subject to a more restrictive license if they're provided by a third party copyright holders. Authors who are using the repository route, that's route two, will be expected to include a standard declaration with their submission to a publisher. The declaration must state that they retain the right to post the accepted manuscript on a repository with a CC BY license, and the text of the declaration is included on this slide. Further guidance on how the University of Glasgow is going to support this is being discussed and will provide updates. You can email us at research-openaccess if you're planning to submit a paper. 
You have to include a data access statement in your article, even where there's no data associated with the article or the data are inaccessible. UKRI have provided us with a checklist summarizing that open access is required with the CC BY license and that the statement must be included if you plan to deposit the text in a repository to enable compliance. We've amended this checklist slightly in green to add a reminder that you should include your funder name and the official award number in the paper. And you can contact us for help at any stage via research-openaccess at glasgow.ac.uk. So what do authors need to do? Think about this in advance of submitting a paper. Is there a mandatory cost? If so, have you, have you got confirmation that this will be paid for in this case? Do you need help with, with planning compliance? When a paper is accepted, add it to Enlighten by notifying us at research-openaccess at glasgow.ac.uk. Send us a copy of the final accepted manuscript. Include your award numbers on papers. Include a data statement in your paper also. Don't agree to pay for open access unless you have funds to do so. Use your university email address and affiliation. This may help with access to some publisher arrangements that, that will enable open access. And read any agreements that publishers send to make sure that they enable you to comply with the policy. On your behalf, uh, the library will check funder requirements and publishers policy and advise you how to proceed. We can do this whenever you ask in advance of submission or when you notify us upon acceptance. If appropriate and necessary, we'll pay for open access from the funds that we hold. If authors are taking the green repository route, we'll deposit the manuscript and make it available where appropriate. We also have a range of training courses and guidance available, and we're happy to speak with groups of staff or students, so please ask us if you're interested in that. So now I'm going to talk about the new open access books policy that comes into force in 2024 for monographs, book chapters and edited collections. Under the new policy, the long form publication of books accepted, sorry, books published after the 1st of January 2024 must be free to view within 12 months of publication via the published version on the publisher's website or with the accepted version in a repository. The long form publication must have a CC BY license or another license permitted by UKRI, for example, a more restrictive license by exception or an open government license where there's crown copyright. And again, UKRI recognised that sometimes third party materials such as maps and images may mean that a more restrictive license needs to be applied. Exemptions from the policy include where a case is made that the only appropriate publisher for, for a book can't offer a compliant route. Uh, long form publications arising from training grants are also exempt. Trade books, fictional works, catalogues and scholarly editions are generally excluded from the scope. Further guidance on the books policy and funding around it is expected in late 2022 and we'll be providing further guidance when we have that. So please contact us at research-openaccess if you have any questions about the new UKRI policy uh, to find more about our training material or if you want to arrange an advice session about this policy or any aspects of open access or open research, please do just get in touch with us. Thank you.